came again to the second position. Generally, it was in the third position. Uh, and and, um, and uh, security, internal security, came to the first place. Uh, so my perception is that even if the student movement still has some support from and, and has support from the general population, the general population is starting to think in another in different issues, and that's bad news for the student movement. Uh, and second, I think that if students, the students have internal problems and they are internally divided, up to what I know, uh, regarding their political position. And some of the students from the 2011 Confed, Confederación de Estudiantes, like Camila Vallejo, for example, were criticized because they have ties to political parties. Some students are more radical and don't want to be of ties with these political parties. So what the sociology department at my university is doing now, some people uh, at the sociology department is conducted, conducting interviews with all the leaders, regional and national, of the student movement to see, and that I think would be a way to answer whether, uh, what, how, how bad are the tensions within the movement. But, uh, but nowadays I think they might have some momentum now because the budget is being discussed, but uh, the trends in public opinion polls are not very, very good for the student movement. And also, you know what, uh, uh, something that Christina had mentioned, and I have to be transparent about that, I am a department chair. And that means that I had to deal with some of the things last year. Um, and so I am pessimistic also about that, you know, that, like life has to go on. You cannot be in a permanent state of... Last week there was an interview of the, an, an actor. This is absolutely unrelated. And he was asked about this. And he said, well, students should never go back to the universities, never go back to school. They should. Mm -hmm. But that's not realistic. Uh, so I don't know, you know, that, that's part of my pessimism, that I think it, that the students keep pushing only on the education reform without getting to the broader picture of institutional reforms that the country needs, constitutional reform, uh, getting to this other dimension regarding the electorate. They are calling not to vote. Some sectors are calling not to vote. Afunar las elecciones. I don't know, you know, the guy, these guys are the guys that are the same, the, taking the decisions. And that's my pessimism. You have to sit with Moreira, you have to sit with Chadwick, you have to sit with all these men and women that have no gender sensitivity to discuss these issues. Um, so that, uh, I'm Uruguayan, so that's why I'm so pessimistic. <laughs> so I guess I have a related question. Um, you say, and I, I tend to agree, that, that basically the political system was completely unable to process the popular demand during the last, you know, since 2006, if you, 
come in, in with us. Okay. Uh, revolution. Um, and there are, you know, a few elements that you could say point towards a, a possible change. One is a generational issue. I mean, it's not just that the political parties have not changed uh, their ideological stand, it's that it's the same guys yeah. sitting in Absolutely. Congress. And it's not just the same guys, some of them are the same guys that were before the coup. I mean, there are a couple of senators that were there as ministers or, ministers or uh, you know, congressmen on 71. And during the Pinochet administration. And during the Pinochet administration as ministers, for example. Um, and this is sort of getting to an end for, for, for generational, you know, for, for just they are too old to stay there for 10 more years. Um, and at least, I mean, as far as I can see, there is no, there is no next generation as, you know, solid politically as they are. Um, the second is that the, the electoral not change, and it sort of opened the door for anyone to vote in a, in a, in a system that's similar to the U.S. now. Um, and it's, you know, I think no one knows what will happen in terms of voter, you know, turnout in the next elections. And we have municipal elections this year, and you know, presidential and Congress election mm -hmm. next year. Um, so that two things, and, and third, the, 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 the social component, component of, you know, 70% of the guys in, at the university are first generation, they come from lower socioeconomic status families, uh, and they are part of the movement, and they were out of the political system, you know, until five years ago. Basically, they were completely excluded. There was no yeah. massive, you know, a massive presence of low income, highly educated kids. Um, so my question, I guess, is, is how do you see the possibility of a structural change, of a change in the political system, and uh, of a change in the, uh, a change of the constitution, basically. Which is, we have to say, the same constitution that Pinochet created during the 70s and signed into you know, law in, in, in 98. So well, you got to the to the very uh, basis of my pessimism. <laughs> I, I don't want to be depressive, so I don't, but but I think I I am worried, okay, and and I want to contrast my personal view with other colleagues' view that laugh about me when I start to be so pessimistic. Uh, I. Okay, L let's start with the, um, with the second question, how voters will behave. We don't know how voters will behave, but some electoral political scientists that I really <coughs> trust have been doing research on this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you can trust their simulations, whatever, but, but I think they are pretty solid. Um, uh, Patricio Navia, Mauricio Morales, uh, there is an electoral observatory in Universidad de Portales. And what they say is that it looks really bad because the the pattern, the voting patterns, they don't think will change a lot. Um, they have a small working paper. If you are interested, I can email that to you. But basically, what they claim is that you won't have the younger generation voting, and that you will have the so the padrones envejecido. How do you say that? The, uh, that's the conclusion of them. And we'll still, you will have an old uh, electoral, you know, uh, old pool of voters. So there is no evidence, according to them, that young people who cannot now vote, because before uh, you could choose to register to vote or not. And after you registered, it was mandatory to vote. Okay, so turnout was really low because most voting age population would not take this responsibility forever. It was absolutely stupid. Why would you uh, decide to do something that you cannot uh, go back? Now, what they did is that there is automatic the registration. So anyone can vote. 
but the problem is that uh, this is not creating any incentive for young people to, to vote because of what you were saying, I think, before, that you have the same old people there. Um, and a political system that tend to overrepresent the two largest blocks of legislators. Now the problem is that these overrepresented legislators, if you are here, you don't belong to these four percent of seats uh, challenging the system. If you are here, why would you change an electoral system that benefits you? Because the binominal electoral system also benefits the concertación. That's the other thing, you know. So the progressive guys over here are very happy with the binominal system. And if there is any Chilean concertacionista here, the next question will be, well, but there have been several attempts to reform the system. There was a commission under Bachelet administration, but you know what, when the report of the commission came out, 10 minutes after the reform came out, 10 minutes, the leaders of the, the, the Christian Democratic Party were saying that this reform was a disaster. They didn't have even time to read it. So you know what? I, I don't think there, there is a, there is many room. Uh, but I don't think there has been any serious mobilization regarding changing the system. Up to now, it has been a sort of intellectual bourgeois uh, elite sort of debate. Is uh, you know some of my friends are debating this, but it's not a societal problem. If you go and ask in the street, mm -hmm. what do you think about the binomial system? Uh, people really don't care about that, and it's not because people are stupid. I think that because it has not been politicized in the right manner. So my hope is that if, if these associations and um, some legislators move toward pushing on that direction, it will capture the same attention than uh, this other force. But I don't know. I'm sorry. I would like to be different and say something different. So, so as a political scientist, do you get the sense that the parties are going, from the other side of that question, are the parties going to chase young voters? Like, if we can't assume that young voters are just going to go vote themselves, are the parties going to put any attention like the Obama campaign does? Uh, here that, that's interesting, you know. That's very interesting you ask that. I don't think they have now. Part of the problem is that I think parties were really scared of how uh, these young people were going to behave. Uh, so they didn't want to, I, I don't think they didn't want to get involved, but because it was so unpredictable. But I don't think how long, I mean, it's a question of opportunity, you know, and I think it's a question of time. It will have to happen. They will have to capture I, I this. I think for the, for the presidential election, they have all the incentives to do to it. To do it, yeah. But for the parliament, since it's a binomial system, you, it basically guarantees that one, that the strongest candidate, they usually present two candidates, each block presents two candidates, one really strong candidate and one really weak candidate. And it basically guarantees that, you know, the strongest candidate on each side will be elected. So it sort of guarantees a 50-50 split in Congress, so there is no incentive to have a, a, a higher turnout. It doesn't matter. You and know the result of the election beforehand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are a few districts that are competitive, uh, but I would say, I don't know, 85, many percent of districts are settled before the election. Uh, and it's up to the internal process within the political parties to decide. Yeah. Rosana, how much were um, the Chilean They are involved. I think that one of the problems of the Chilean system is not only that some of the owners are 
here or are in think tanks, both in the concertación and the alianza. But also that it's so terrible that it, it also touches upon, for example, the system of accreditation. I underwent, and this is, uh, oh, they are filming me, but um, I, I was responsible for the accreditation of political science in my university. And this was the first time a political science career ever in the country underwent accreditation. So, to give you an example, I discovered that the accreditation of careers is done by private companies that are approved by the National Accreditation uh, Association or Commission. Some of the members of these accreditation companies are related to universities. For example, I was invited to serve as a reviewer. And I said, I, you cannot, I mean, I am asking to be with you. I cannot be reviewing other people. It's in my own interest that, you know, there is what? Um, so, it's so, it's so complicated. And so, this, is, this was the question this was the question I had to, what, what are you supposed to do? To go to the serious company of accreditation or to go to the lousy company of accreditation? Because at the end, you will be under the accreditation level. And only a few scholars know the difference. We decide to go because I work with these uh, self-conscious men um, that we had to go with the best company. And I swear I couldn't sleep for weeks. I had insomnia because you say, why am I exposing myself to go through this process? There is no warranty that the rest of your competitors are going to behave in the same manner. So in one of the accreditation companies that we consider and we decide not to go, it was one of the owners of another university in the board who works with the minister. So, and I don't know, I, I am not like bright or, or con I, I never believed in conspiracies. I am not a Nobel Prize. I mean, anyone can realize that this is wrong. You know? uh, so it's, it's very complicated. Everyone is, and this guy, this same guy, I, I am, I don't want to release my children. This, this same guy that was owner of a university and is in the board of one of them, he appeared some weeks ago saying, the problem no is el lucro. The problem is not for-profit institution. You cannot participate even as a key player in the debate if you are winning money out of this and try to pass it as an academic position that you are against for-profit. And believe me, I don't know if I am, if I'm not claiming that I am against for-profit system. The point is that it is illegal. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's very complicated. It's very, very, very complicated. But I don't know. The only good thing I think is that regarding what <laughs> you were saying about the next generation, I don't know, I think that uh, there are some conservative think tanks in Chile that are very are doing a great job. Even if I don't like what they do uh, in terms of the conclusions they are they arrive to, they uh, they have been doing a great job and they are serious people. You know? mm -hmm. um, so I think that I hope that if there is some cambio generacional, some generational change these things have uh, something to do with that. For example, I don't know if you know, but the LSEP. Um, they do a great job, but the, the current minister yeah, the I know. comes from there. He yeah. was a serious guy until he... Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I know, I know, I, really I know, but it's what we have. Weeks it's it's what we have, and it's better than Sabat. Yeah. Parcela Sabat, no? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> At least. <laughs>
Thank you very much, everyone.
how how much people were mobilized from these places, especially last year, it was incredible. Yeah. Was huge. So yeah, I understand your testimony. It's huge. Not depressing, but depressing. No, 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 right. And also, you know what? Uh, uh, something that Christina had mentioned, and that I think would be a way to answer whether uh, what how how bad are the tensions within the movement. But uh, but nowadays, I think they might have some momentum now because the budget is being discussed. But uh, the trends in public opinion polls are not very very good for the student movement. I think. internally divide up to what I know uh, regarding their political position. And some of the students from the 2011 Confrech, Confederación de Estudiantes, like Camila Vallejo, for example, were criticized because they have ties to political parties. Some students are more radical and don't want to be of ties with these political parties. So what the sociology department at my university is doing now. Some people uh, at the sociology department is conducted, conducting interviews with all the leaders, regional and national, of the student movement to see and came again to the second position. Generally, it was in the third position. Uh, and and, um, and uh, security, internal security, came to the first place. Uh, so my perception is that even if the student movement still has some support from and, and has support from the general population, the general population is starting to think in another in different issues, and that's bad news for the student movement. Uh, and second, I think that if a student Students have internal problems, and they are in, have to be transparent about that. I am a department chair. And that means that I had to deal with some of the things last year. Um, and so I am pessimistic also about that. You know, that, like life has to go on. You cannot be in a permanent state of, uh, last week there was an interview of the, uh, an, an actor. This is absolutely unrelated. And he was asked about this, and he said, well, students should never go back to the universities, never go back to school, they should. Mm -hmm. But that's not realistic. Uh, so I don't know, you know, that, that's part of my pessimism, that I think it, that the students keep pushing all